back to part two of Arcadius' story. So part one was the last video where I talked about his adoption story, and this will be part two where I talk about metabolic bone disease, what it is, and my tips for combating it. I think I have like eight of them, and I do have Arcadius, he's right here. I didn't go through the trouble of taking him out, he might join us in this video, or he might just sit there and chill. So first I want to start off with what is MBD, metabolic bone disease. So there's a lot of different things that could cause metabolic bone disease, but, but there are really four main factors that play into metabolic bone disease. Those four factors are calcium, phosphorus, UVB, and vitamin D3. So a big part of iguana care and preventing metabolic bone disease is a proper diet. So a two to one ratio. You guys have seen in all of my shopping for my iguana videos, at the end when I talk about the foods that I got, I put their calcium to phosphorus ratio in there. So you want to aim for foods that have a two to one calcium to phosphorus ratio. Basically you want your iguana to get more calcium than phosphorus. So they aren't getting enough calcium, they're getting more phosphorus and phosphorus rich foods like broccoli, which was Arcadius' favorite in his old home. Then the body isn't getting enough calcium. If the body's not getting enough calcium, it'll start pulling it from the bones, which then causes them to have weak and brittle bones that are prone to breakage. So besides diet, another important part of Iguanacare is UVB. This is where it gets a little complicated. UVB is used to synthesize vitamin D3. The iguanas use vitamin D3 to absorb calcium. So if there's no UVB, there's no vitamin D3. And if there's no vitamin D3, they can't absorb calcium. So it all kind of loops back together. It's all kind of connected. So you have UVB, vitamin D3, phosphorus, and calcium. Those are the four main factors. Like I said, there are others. Usually when you see signs of MBD, it's because of those four things. There are several symptoms of MBD, and I'll just name a few. So these are all things that apply to iguanas. But some of these can also apply to bearded dragons or any of the other reptiles that can get metabolic bone disease or animals that can get metabolic bone disease. So some of these are um, they stop eating, they are constipated or not going to the bathroom. So you can see softening or swelling of the jaw or receding of the lower jaw. Um, they could have paralysis, like Arcadius did, or even just be limping, unable to hold their body up. Um, you can see bumps in their legs, around the spine, and their tail. Look for kinks. Uh, I'll show you Arcadius's kinks. And of course, fractures and weak bones because calcium is being pulled away from them. So it's going to be very easy to break them which is where you get those kinks. All right, so now I've got him out. So I'm gonna see if I can show you his kinks. So he's kind of fat right now. I think he needs to go to the bathroom. And the way he is standing right now, you can't see it very well. But you can kind of tell right here his spine. So as in right now, it doesn't look that bad. But when he's walking around or just laying down, it's massive, like it is so heartbreaking. He also has his kink right here, which is much more obvious. And the very end of his tail, you can tell is kinked. And of course their toes are very easy to break just because of how thin they are. So then you add in NBD and their toes are their toes are gone. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, he wasn't interested in being out. But now you guys can see him better. Maybe he'll go eat his blackberries that I put in there for him. Alright, so I'm gonna kind of finish his story and then get into how we beat metabolic bone disease. Alright, so you guys know I got him while I was still at school, so my mom was taking care of him. When she brought him home, the stress from moving him over to a new home brought out some of the signs. So he started to drag one of his hind legs. So she took him to a vet 45 minutes away, and he gave her a phosphate blocker and said to give it to him every single day. When she brought him home, he started dragging the other leg, we think from the stress of going to the vet, because obviously he'd never been to a vet. So she was giving him the phosphate blocker every day, he now had UVB, and he was getting the proper diet, 
So by the end of the week, he was totally fine again, moving around, looked great. So I come home and we're thinking we had just missed what could be very bad metabolic bone disease. We handled it just in time, he was looking great, and then everything that could have happened, happened. So we opened the window because it was really nice outside. The dog learned how to open the door to the bedroom and the cat wanted to go in and sit next to the window because it was open. So all of that happened. I went in to bring him his food and I couldn't even see him. I was looking for a bright blue iguana and he was curled up in the corner, stress colors so dark. I didn't even see him at first. It was heartbreaking. So he was literally folded in half in the corner trying to get away from this cat. And so I shooed the cat out and left him alone thinking that I'd just let him calm down and move away on his own, see that the cat's gone. I didn't want to go in there and stress him out more. And when I went back in later, he was not using his back legs. I say they looked like frog legs, so they were kind of out like this. And when he walked, he kind of airplaned and teeter-tottered. And it was just completely, completely heartbreaking. So we gave it about a week because that's how long it took last time. And obviously because his back legs weren't working, he also wasn't going to the bathroom. Alright, so we went and saw our local vet, we found out he actually does reptiles, he just doesn't advertise it, and he had an iguana. So we went to see him. This particular vet is not very optimistic. If he sees a medical problem, then he's like, your animal is probably not going to make it. So you can imagine what it was like going in there with an iguana with severe metabolic bone disease. Okay, like... Nine times out of ten, an iguana does not come back from that. When they're paralyzed and they can't go to the bathroom on their own, they don't come back from that. So he was nice enough to not actually say that. I had just gotten home from college. I just got this iguana. I was so excited about it. It was my first, like, big girl reptile. Because at the time I only had Zephyr, my leopard gecko. So he helped us out. He took Arcadius into the back and manually pooped him to clear out his system and he told us no more phosphate blocker. We shouldn't have even been given a phosphate blocker. This is another problem with not just iguanas but reptiles and giving them medications. You can't control how much their body is using. So we got the phosphate blocker to block the phosphate so he'd be getting more calcium. The problem with this is he's potentially now not getting the phosphate he needs and could be getting too much calcium, which can do just as much harm as not enough calcium. And it's kind of complicated to understand. I had a basic understanding of it all when I got him from doing research, but it wasn't until last year when I took animal nutrition that I actually really kind of understood the whole thing. It was really weird. I don't know why I just did that. So we took him in the back, pooped him, we got off the phosphate blocker, and every couple of days we'd go back and he would manually poop Arcadius. This whole time, his legs are getting a little bit of movement back. He's kind of able to move around, but really, he's not. We took everything out of his enclosure. We put a towel down so that when he went to walk, he could have something to grab onto. Because before it was just like paper, he had a rock that he'd like to sit on that put under his UVB and he couldn't climb up that because he'd go to grab with his front legs and they'd slip off. So he'd line the whole bottom with a towel so he could grab onto stuff with his nails. He had his stuffed animals he liked to cuddle with. So we tried to do what we could. We gave him multiple baths daily because iguanas like to poop in the water. We kind of did whatever we could. Eventually got to the point where the vet was so sick of us coming in and throwing money at him that he showed us how to poop. Arcadius so my mom and I could do it at home and we were doing it like every two days where at the vet we we're doing it like every four days so we will do it a little more consistently so fun fact I know how to poop an iguana not something I would recommend trying at home unless you have been shown by a professional who thinks you can actually do it otherwise it could go wrong very wrong so by about week three his back legs were moving much better but he still wasn't going to the bathroom so it wasn't until week four, so a whole month, that I was in the bathroom with him, letting him exercise, get those legs moving, that he went to the bathroom. I can't even tell you the joy 
as soon as I saw it was a butt wiggle and I heard the toots, I knew and I was so happy. I couldn't believe it. Oh my gosh. It was crazy. This was literally like a couple days before I went back to college and had to take him. So it was just crazy because like I knew I wouldn't have anyone in here at college to help me poop him. So it was great. It was, oh my gosh, perfect timing. So you can imagine my joy when we went back to that vet before I came back to school just to make sure everything was great. And I brought him an iguana who survived paralysis and constipation and not being able to go to the bathroom on his own. I was like, here's my iguana. He can walk, well, crawl, whatever iguanas do. And he's pooping on his own. I have never, in all these years of seeing that vet, we used to bring our cats there. I have never seen him mind blown and just like, wow, uh, wow. We literally brought in Arcadius and he was just like, oh my gosh, this is unheard of. This does not happen. Iguanas do not survive this. Like, it is unheard of for an iguana with severe metabolic bone disease like that to survive and make it out and make a comeback like that. He has never seen it before, never heard of it. It was just an unheard of. And Arcadius did it. So he's my little miracle iguana. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you guys learned something. If you have any experience with metabolic bone disease, any stories you want to share, any questions, feel free to just comment below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more videos. And we'll see you next time.